as long as Elijah was challenging the prophets of Baal and defending the faith, everything was all right. As long as Elijah was calling down fire from heaven, everything was all right. But as soon as the sermon was over, all hell broke loose. In his life. And I stopped by to tell you, Bishop, I know that Sunday mornings are great because the deacons are praying and the choir is singing and the members are fellowshipping and the praise is high and the worship is high, but the real test comes in between. When you come down off of your spiritual high, when, when the organ music fades and when everybody goes their separate ways, that's when the real battle begins. That's the trenches because the challenge is not to get weak in the middle of the week because there's mess on Mondays, there's a test on Tuesday, there's wickedness on Wednesday, there's temptations on Thursday, there's foolishness on Friday, there's sorrows on Saturday. Lord, help me to make it through the week in between Sunday. You had a letter. Just like, just like Elijah, we would be honest about it. We would admit that sometimes trouble makes us want to run away. It makes us want to run away from our responsibilities. It makes us want to run away from our services. Trouble makes husbands want to run away from wives. Wives want to run away from the husbands. They need to run away wives. <laughs> Trouble will make children run away from families. Teachers run away from classrooms. And students run away from schools. Choir members run away from the choir stand. And, and pastors run away from the pulpit. And Christians run away from church all because of kind. But you better be careful, Mount Herman, when you're running away from problems because when you're running away from your problems, you just may be running away from your purpose. I, I, I know, I know that ministry can take a toll on you. I know that it gets intense sometimes and I know that we want to avoid uncomfortable situations and we tempt, attempt to choose the path of the least resistance and the least difficulty and the least sacrifice but can I tell you that God is more concerned about your contribution than he is about your comfort. He's more concerned about your significance than he's concerned about your physical safety. God will not choose safety at the cost of significance because if Abraham would have avoided conflict, he would have never gone to Mount Moriah. If Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo would have avoided conflict, they never would have gone into the fiery furnace. If Daniel would have avoided conflict, he never would have ended up in the lion's den. If Jesus would have avoided conflict, he never would have ended up on the cross. But they all realize that by avoiding conflict, they would have aborted their purpose. So they said, bring it on. If I got to go through the lion's den, if I got to go through the fire and furnace, if I got to hang on the cross, bring it on because I know what my purpose is. and say, bring it on. I'm ready for whatever this life has to bring me. As long as I can look to the hills from which come in my head. To be honest with you, when I look at Elijah's life, brother, whatever, I, 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 I can't help but to notice a pattern in his life because it seems as though he goes from one troubling situation into another troubling situation. I, I told you he delivered bad news. He upset the king. He, he went to the brook and he, the brook was dried up and, and he faced a depleted barrel. He had no food to eat. He, 
he went to the dead boy and he went to this widow and her son died and he had to deal with an angry mother. He went from one troubling situation to the next troubling situation. And I don't know how you feel about it today, but I, when I look at my own life, I'm able to see that same troubling Sometimes it seems uh, as soon as I come out of one storm, another one isn't that far behind. As soon as I finish one battle, I, I kind of I find myself going into another battle. When I got problems on my job, but then when those straighten out, I got problems in my household. And then when those straighten out, there's problems in the church. And then there's problems when I got to deal with my children. I get that straightened out. And I, then I got to deal with problems with my spouse. And I get that straightened out. Then I find out. I go to the doctor, find out. I get a bad report. And I'm sick in my body. Soon as I get well, I find out that somebody gonna cancel my card and, and my, my credit is all messed up and it seems like if it ain't one thing then it's another. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Tell somebody to, today if life were nothing more than a string of troubling circumstances we will all be in bad shape this morning but I thank God that I see another pattern in Elijah's life because I notice that each time Elijah goes to a storm, God delivers him from the storm. Even when he had to deal with the depleted barrel, the Bible says that the woman made his meal first and as she was taking meal from the top of the barrel, God was stuffing meal in the bottom of the barrel and God was able to restore her son's life and God took care of Elijah every step of the way. And my testimony is, yes, I had some problems and I go from problems to problems, but I also go from deliverance to deliverance. Yes, I go from trouble to trouble, but I go from breakthrough to breakthrough and I go from miracle to miracle and I found out in my life that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but watch this, God will deliver you from them all. You've been through the storm and rain, but can anybody testify? I've made it. You had some highlights in your head sometimes, but it can be made. If you can testify, this can be made. Sometimes it takes hot water to bring the flavor out. Y'all flavorful, baby, because I've been through some stuff and I'm able to say that God was able to make a way out of nowhere. He was able to open doors where there were no doors. <laughs> it's all right here, but watch this. Watch this. I, I know, I know that Elijah had a lot of expectations yeah. for his ministry. Yeah. And I know that he was waiting for the manifestation of those expectations. But in between expectations and manifestation, sometimes there's a little frustration. Sometimes in between expectation and manifestation you'll find some aggravation and you'll find some agitation don't you be discouraged <laughs> hang on in there because uh, the frustration and the aggravation and the, the agitation uh, is all for a transformation because uh, God is trying to prepare you for something you may not be able to handle right now so uh, I stand by on my way back over the river to tell somebody 
that weeping may endure for a night. But if you help